Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna go over some techniques that have helped me in becoming a better sprinter on Zwift. And that includes some short exercises to help maximize your effectiveness and getting your power through the pedals. And then we'll finish it up with a race that I think is fantastic for dialing in your sprint timing and honing explosiveness. I do live stream my Sunday races and midweek workouts over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Watts Wheelhouse. Feel free to join me over there, get involved in the chat and ask any questions you might have. All right, let's get to it. Hello and welcome to Watts Wheelhouse. I'm Chris. First things first, you wanna know what gear on your bike you can get on top of in the terrain that the finishing line comes up in. A race that I have coming up, the LaGuardia Super Sprint Race, it's only four kilometers, but the finishing 500 meters or so starts with a climb and then it goes downhill to the finish. So I know I have to hit it hard before that climb. I need to get on top of my gear, which means spinning at my optimal cadence for power before that climb. I'm typically aiming for 120 to 130 RPM. I will choose my gear well in advance. My cadence will be might be even below 60, 50 or 60 before we get into it. And then when I know it's time to really get on top of it, I'll spin it up as fast as I can and just hold it to the finish. Now it really helps practice that drive from the hips. For my sprints, I'll do real short efforts with trainer difficulty turned off. I'll get into a relatively big gear and I'll get a slow spin like this. And this is more technique building than strength building. Strength work is done in the gym, but here you wanna get that jump. You wanna get used to getting on top of the gear, nice and slow, 40 RPM or so. And then I'll come out of the saddle as my right foot comes over the top of the pedal stroke and treat it like it's a trap bar deadlift and really drive with everything engaged. Ready? Short like that, rip the handlebars off the bike. And again, we're not looking for outright strength here. So we'll try again, this time with the left foot forward. Just a few pedal strokes, four or five, start getting it spun up. I have my front wheel a bit elevated too. I find having the front end up a little bit on Zwift gives me just a little bit more ability to get over the front. So we'll do this again with the left foot coming over and And you really just wanna get that initial punch, four or five pedal strokes, I don't even know I wasn't counting. And when I do a workout like this, I try and give myself a good rest in between. If you're doing all out sprints, 10, 15, even 20 second sprints, you're gonna to wanna to give yourself 10 minutes of rest between sprints, minimum. And when I'm on track, my 10 minutes of rest are spent sitting down. So let's get another one in here. We'll do two more, one each side. Let's try a bigger gear. As that right foot comes up and over, drive from the hips, a few pedal strokes, four or five maybe. If you wanna count, drop it in the comments. I don't know. Tougher to get on top of for sure. All right, we got left foot coming up. Let's find that big gear again. All right, when the left foot comes over the top, We'll jump forward and start the spinning. Oh, starting to feel a bit of fatigue. And when I open up my sprint, I will treat it like a trap bar deadlift. I'll shift forward, focusing on the glutes and an efficient transfer of energy through my whole body. And then once I've got that spun up a bit, a few pedal strokes, and I'm on top of the gear, I'll shift my hips back and focus on maintaining that fast spin and just trying to crank the pedals faster and faster, as opposed to just pushing harder and harder. I'll choose a gear that I know I can get on top of, but I'll be spinning pretty slow entering into the sprint. So let's just see what that'll look like. So it'd be something like that. A distinct shift forward, really driving with your glutes, getting a lot of power through the hips, making sure your upper body is engaged, pulling up on the bars while you're driving through the pedals, and then keeping that spin going. Seems like there's a much smaller field this week. And of course, like any race, they hammer it right off the start, which can be challenging, especially if they keep the pace up, but it'll typically be over in about five to six minutes. It's one of the reasons I love this event so much. Sometimes you get a flyer who will launch an early attack, but those are tough to hang on to because of the double drafting. All right. 
Here we go. Oh, up they go. That's what I get for chatting. They are on it. Draft. Up a little rolling hills here. Very short though. I try and keep it in a relatively larger gear than I would for a longer race because you need to be ready for a punch. So as I typically like to race around 95 RPM, It's tough to really spin up from 95 or so. And of course, the longer you can hang on to that high power, the better off you'll be. So doing some longer speed endurance work on the rollers is really beneficial to a race like this. Whoop. There we go, someone. Someone taking it by the reins up there. Now again, I am a pure sprinter. So when I see a flyer like that, I know I don't have the power to hold that pace. I got a threshold power of maybe 310, but my weight is just too much. There we go. There's an answer. Well, they're pushing. All right. 
5312. My heart rate's higher than I'd like it. Here we go. Is this it? There it is. I didn't get on top of it like I should have, but <laughs> that's because I went a little too late. But sprinting on Zwift is different than sprinting outside. I would say sprinting on Zwift is like squatting using a Smith machine. It's still lifting weights. It's still a workout, but it's different. It isn't barbell squatting and sprinting on Zwift is not like sprinting in the real world. Well, there you have it. Now, there's no doubt that those initial pedal strokes require significant strength to get spinning. So don't discount gym work. A regular routine of deadlifting, split squatting, and accessory work is key for maintaining a strong sprint, not to mention overall health. So I would definitely recommend getting to the gym a few times a week and incorporate those workouts to any training that you're already doing on the bike. Also, if you're not fully recovering, you're throwing your workouts away. All right, that's all I've got for today. So share this with your friends share this with your foes. Feel free to give a like and a subscribe. I'm Chris, this is Watts Wheelhouse, and I'll see you next time.